today's tutorial we're going to go over OptiRough in uh, our 3D tool pass. In the link in the description I've included a solid model for this. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And you can just go to Step Files. We'll go ahead and import our 3D model here. <clears throat> you can see that it's already in our work coordinate system. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. And then I'm going to go to Machine, Mill. We're going to use the default mill. And then we need to set up our stock. So stock setup, add bounding box, and I'm going to select the cursor on the manual and select the solid model, and it will give us our stock. If you've been following along, you know that's uh you know the deal all right so now that our stock set up we could go ahead and do our opti rough tool path so i'm going to select the tool path and then in avoidance regions i'm going to select our solid model and then now we could adjust stock to leave on that I'm going to leave uh, 20 thou on the walls, and for floor stock, we're going to mill all the way down to our floor. Okay, toolpath control. Um, bounding chains, we'll go over that a little bit later. In strategy, I want to go from the outside, so it'll mill the outside of our part as well as the inside. And then if you do inside, it's going to try to stay within the boundary of our uh, stock. And then I'm going to compensate to the inside. And then for a tool, we're going to create a tool. And I'm just going to use a half inch end mill. And for cutting length, I'm going to do an inch and a half. And then that should be fine. And then if you're cutting aluminum, I like uh, three fluter and for SM, we could set it to a thousand. Um, we could probably run it a little bit faster than that, but I'll just go ahead and use that. I'm actually going to turn the feed rate up a bit to 60. And then for plunge, I'm going to use um, also 60. Uh, I don't think we've gone over holders, but you could um, select a holder that you have. You could even design holders. All right. So if I go to this would be like a heat shrink holder, right? That'd be like your standard call it holder. And for tool projection, I'm going to go ahead and leave stick out at 2.125. And then we'll just go ahead and use C6. I mean, you could select any holder that you want, really. Um, but we'll go ahead and use that. And then for cut parameters, we're going to do climb for step over percentage. I'm going to use 40%. Step down, I'm going to say that our tool can go down 150% or a three quarter. And then max toolpath radius, I'm going to set that to 5% uh, to try to get in between. Um, I mean, it, it'll probably be fine at 10%. But if you have uh, tighter spaces, like um, a little bit of space between two bosses, you could tidy that up for the tool to get into. But we'll go ahead and tidy that up anyways. And then steep shallows. Um, this is where you could set limits on how far down you want it to mill. I'm going to go ahead and let it mill the entire part. But say you wanted it to um, only mill down to this boss, you could uh, just 
select your limit here. So there it could only go down one inch, right? All right, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave that off so it will mill the entire part. Um, linking parameters. So for clearance plane, I'm gonna leave that at a quarter an inch and I want um, minimum vertical retract just so it doesn't um, go all the way back up to our clearance plane and then come back down it'll kind of skip over little bosses and stuff it'll it'll make the tool path run a little bit more efficiently and the rest of this in our retracts I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as the standard and then keep tool down within 500% of uh, our tool diameter right but we set it to 150% but I'll go ahead and leave it at 200%. Uh, transitions, uh, micro lift retract, we'll leave that at never. And then micro lift distance is 10 thou. And back feed rate is when the tool's not engaged with any material. Mastercamp's smart enough to uh, figure out when it's in material and when it isn't. So you could beef that up almost to like a rapid speed so I'll go ahead and put that at 200 I'll be 200 IPM and lead in lead out or horizontal methods this is all gonna be fine the standard uh, inputs that it gives us and then secondary leads we'll just leave that at um, the default and then I want to machine entire passes for fitting type And we'll go ahead and go through and see if we missed anything. I think we're fine. Oh, this was a, a thing I missed. So back in cut parameters. So step up is where it could actually um, do our angles for us. So it'll come down like three quarters of an inch. It'll hog out almost all the material that it can. And then step up, it will climb back up and machine this ramp for us. So we can leave that at 5% and it's gonna be a 25,000 step up. So you'll see the, the power in OptiRough when doing um, 3D surfaces and walls that are not perpendicular to the XY plane. So I'm going to click apply and it's going to take a second to generate the tool path. There's going to be a lot going on. I'm going to click OK. So now we could see that it's going to do all kinds of things, right? And it, it looks a little bit intimidating, but you're just gonna have to trust that Mastercam figured out where the tool can plunge and what it's gonna do. So it's actually gonna take care of a lot of the roughing in our bores here. And in here is a tapered bore with a straight bore inside of it. We have tapered angles on this boss and then we have that tapered angle on this wall here. So if you're gonna program this in uh, 2D, um, 2D dynamic mill, you'd have to create all kinds of different tool paths. You know, you'd have to create one for the floor, you'd have to create one in this pocket and all that stuff. But OptiRef can just uh, work off the 3D model itself and um, pretty much take care of all the roughing for you and then you're just going to have to go back through and uh, do finishing passes and I'd recommend switching to a new tool to do finishing passes so if I select my toolpath group and we click uh, verify we could go ahead and um, see how this toolpath is going to machine our stock 
Let me just give it a second here to load. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and um, slow it down a bit. It might take a while, but this really is the most efficient way for roughing out material. I mean, even if you're using like five axis or something, you want to uh, rough out almost all the material with uh, um, basically with a three axis tool path and then you'd hit all the five axis stuff afterwards. But we'll get into that a little bit later. So let's go ahead and click play and we can see how it's going to go. So you see it's going to start its helix into that first bore. Then I really do like the Verify in Mastercam just because when I go to the machine, I, I kind of know what the tool's going to do. So a little bit more confident when uh, doing my uh, first article or first run of any program. And plus these new dynamic uh, tool paths are pretty cool to watch in the machine. And now it's working its way downwards and it's also doing a little bit of the step ups too. So it's doing big passes to kind of clean up everything. And then it should drop down and kind of smooth that out for us. And then when it's done, um, you could also clean up these surfaces with like a little ball mill or something just to smooth it out. So this part had a lot of features, right? And it should be able to take care of all of them. I'm gonna go ahead and speed it up because and then also in Verify it has a uh, elapsed time, so it'll give you an idea of how long it's gonna take to run in the actual machine. So yeah, I was pretty successful and then you just have to come back with a ball mill or something and then clean up these angled surfaces or even um, flip the part and machine that a little bit better, but we'll go ahead and leave it like this and then I'll go over um, like a ball mill surfacing in Mastercam in another video. But this is just uh, a demonstration of the power of OptiRough. I mean, you could throw in almost any model and it'll figure out the most efficient way to um, hog out all the material for you. So if we go back into parameters, oops, sorry. I'm gonna close that. Let's go to wireframe. I'm gonna go to top view. And then I'm just gonna draw a rectangle You could draw any rectangle that you want. It's not that critical. It's just a demonstration of the, the boundary box. So back in toolpath control, we have a boundary chain. And we could select our, make sure you're in wireframe mode here, and chain right. And then just select that chain right there and click OK. And we'll just go ahead and let it generate our tool path. So you can see that the tool is now constrained. It's only going to mill material on this portion of the part. So that's good if you want to um, uh, I don't, I'm not sure what to say here. Uh, if you've already taken care of one area of the part 
with different tool paths and you just want to limit the um, the milling into one constrained area then you could use your boundary chain right and I'll go ahead and take that off and click apply and then we could go ahead and oh the other thing we could do is we could do a strategy from inside and you'll see that the toolpath is just constrained to the inside of the solid. So it's not going to wander in from the outside. And then instead of um, engaging this open pocket from the outside, it's going to try to stay within the solid model. So it's going to do a helix down in that area. All right. That was a basic overview of Master Cam's OptiRough, and it's a great toolpath to use. And I hope you find this video useful and stay tuned for the next video. All right. Also, if you guys have any um, questions on different things in Master Cam, you could go ahead and um, ask in the comment section, and I'll probably make a video about that. So, thanks for watching, and bye.